Welcome, everybody, to another episode of On Top and Hot. I'm John Zadar, your host. And today we are doing a follow up interview with Resilient Energy, ticker R E N I. It was back in February we had our first interview with the company. They were just finalizing their acquisition of Challenger Aerospace Defense, also known as CADI, C A D I. They are a multifaceted drone company. These do surveillance, monitoring, reconnaissance, and lots of different fields, folks. They're working in defense, agriculture, construction, law enforcement, and a whole lot more. And today, to bring us up to date on the company's current progress, we are talking to our friend, the CFO and the president of the company, Mark Pindis. How are you doing today, my friend? Okay, John. Good to see you again. Glad to have you here again. I know that you've been working hard on your company. In February, you were just closing the deal with uh, uh, the company Challenger Aerospace Defense. And I believe it was in April, you finally closed it and started making some more progress. So I do want to cover all of that. Now, to be fair to everybody, though, I just don't want to jump into your progress. I want to start from the beginning because there's going to be people watching this that have never heard of this company or seen you before. So why don't you give us a little bit of insight to you? how you got here, your team, and about the company. Okay, well, this is an, uh, a new old company. Uh, the company existed before and uh, strictly in the energy business, oil and gas. And uh, it's been around for a long time. Uh, fell on hard times. Uh, they came back to me. I had been involved with them before, left the company, got back into the company. Um, found a partner. We sort of uh, took it over and um, did something that they'd been trying to do for years, but never were able to do, which was get a stock symbol and start the company trading. Okay. Um, we're interested in energy, of course, but um, we we're sort of pivoting away from that a little bit here with yeah. our purchase of Challenger Aerospace. Yeah. Um, and there, there's a lot of reasons for that, but uh, the, the biggest reason it was an opportunistic buy for us. Mm -hmm. uh, we it was a, it's a great company uh, with a lot of history, uh, great products, yeah, um, a, an excellent president, and uh, we were able to pick it up uh, opportunistically, uh, kept the staff intact, and it's a hot area in the market now, as you know. Uh, areas that involve drones, technology, AI, yeah, uh, are hot right now. And yes. they, they're trading at much higher multiples than uh, energy companies. Mm -hmm. And so we saw this as an opportunity to move into the tech space. Uh, as you said, we completed our purchase uh, April 1st. Right. And uh, we have products in production now. Uh, our most popular product is called the MS MMS 8000. Yes. It's not a drone. It's a sort of a rugged computer system that goes into helicopters and fixed wing aircraft uh, that enables, you know, um, tactical processing and communications and all sorts of networking capabilities. So and it's a computer that's working with regular aircraft, not drones. Yes. Yes. We do that, too. Right. Um, so it's, it's interesting. Um, but, yeah, you need specialized equipment that go into uh, helicopters and fixed wing aircraft that operate in very tough environments. And this computer is specially designed for that. And we've been uh, producing, and we have, we have quite a few units in production right, right now, actually for government, uh, uh, one government uh, agency in particular. So, Oh yeah. Those government contracts are great. And drones are going to be hot. They are going to become definitely the go-to product for military security you, we're going to see drones, and we're not just talking about the ones flying around. Your company is now dealing with drones in the water, drones uh, on the land, drones in the air, probably going to have submarines here soon. I mean, wherever we can go, drones are going to go. And there's always, always a practical application. And we just don't even know all of them yet. We're well, just scratching the surface. It, we're only limited by our imagination, and uh, which which brings us some challenges. First of all, they, they expect the drone market itself uh, to reach $100 billion in the coming years. Uh, most of that is military, but there's also consumer wow. applications um, and other commercial applications, and we'd like to get involved with them at some point in, in all of them. 
Right now, we're mostly um, involved with surveillance and reconnaissance technology uh, mm -hmm. for military and law enforcement clients. Uh, but it's a huge market. I think Amazon just got approved to, to use drones for delivery purposes. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, how many are they going to use it? Well, just look at how many trucks they have on the road. You can imagine how many drones are going to put in the air. More so, drones than trucks. Yeah, it's it's just you know it, I think the the world is going to look more like the remember the cartoon the Jetsons, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, so, we'll probably have Rosie the maid too going yeah. around our house cleaning. Yeah, that was pretty uh, futuristic of the the uh, writers of that series. <laughs> and we're getting real close to it now, real yeah. close. Yeah. Uh, my me and my partner though will have a vision for this uh, this company. Uh huh. Um. Uh, He's got an MBA from Emory, he undergraduate degree from uh, SMU, and he uh, has a long history in finance and investment banking. Um, my uh, background is a little bit more diversified, probably. It's not only sales and marketing, but uh, management uh, and public service. Um, uh, also, I my, got my major in economics from uh, University of Virginia. And, uh, but I think the most apropos experience I have, which applies to how we're building this company, John, mm -hmm. is uh, some years ago, I was um, the founding president of the Academy for Math, Science and Engineering in Morris County, New Jersey. Wow. Um, the, the quick story, um, it, we had one of the last uh, share time vocational programs in the state of New Jersey, and they wanted to create a, a full-time high school. We had pressure from the state and the county to do that. And I did a lot of research and I decided it's time to make the Mars County a, a magnet school system. And uh, it has a lot of academies now, but we started with an academy for math, science and engineering, as well as law and public safety mm -hmm. and the arts. Uh, there's more academies at that school now. When I lived in New Jersey, as, a, as you know, I moved to Connecticut. You uh, get around. <laughs> yeah. But what we did, though, uh, which makes sense is I'm not a mathematician, scientist, or engineer. But what I did was I got great people around me mm. and they gave me great advice. We did the research then I was the one who helped uh, and, and other members of the board, but as president helped raise the money, got the approvals, uh, which included improving the architecture for the new school, uh, the curriculum, the first staff. And we did amazing things there. And that school today, uh, based on one of the ranking systems um, that uh, we've had that, the, that uh, publishes how the schools are ranked, that Academy of Math, Science and Engineering is, I believe, under this ranking system, number one in New Jersey, the eighth ranked magnet school in the United States. And I think wow. it's ranked the 39th best public college prep school. And you do that by getting good people around you who know things that you don't know. Right. You know, right. I, think, I think Steve Jobs says you don't hire people, experts, so you can tell them what to do. You hire them so they can tell you what to do. That's right. That's, right. That's what a cabinet for the president is, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, you know, we have a president, a challenger who's staying with the company, Leroy Day, who helped develop a lot of these products. And doesn't and he have a uh, top secret clearance? Uh, I can't even tell you that. I do believe I read <laughs> that in one of your news presses. He has top. Yeah, he has he has high level clearances. Yes, uh, which is going to be great for military contracts. <laughs> well, it's required, I, I believe. So um, here you go. And we have international clients as well. But but the important thing is, right. I think he's the kind of person who uh, can give us good advice on how to grow this company. Mm -hmm. uh, as we get more talent into the company, possibly make some other acquisitions down the road to try to build out this company. But I built an organization based on engineering, science and mathematics before. I want to bring that experience to building this company, building a good team around us, looking to, you know, in the, it, what's very different about being in a technical field like drones versus oil and gas, for example, is oil and gas, you're selling the same product that they sold 80 years ago. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's pretty much what you take out of the ground, you can sell. In this field, you know, you could be history tomorrow if you don't stay ahead of the game. Yes. You have to be able to envision the next best application, the next best system to put in place. And you need good people to help develop that kind of technology. And I want to build that kind of team around uh, John and I 
uh, starting with Leroy a day and uh, and building a you know cutting edge aerospace and defense company. And you've been working on contracts right now with, with them, aren't you? You've got some deals that are just about ready to close. We yes, we do, but we already have a product in production that we hope to deliver by the end of the month. So you know, I, I had said that this is uh, our startup year or restart year. And yep. this quarter, we're actually in production. We, we get new inquiries all the time. Um, we've gotten, we've secured um, uh, um, financing for production. Uh, some of it's in, some of it's still to come. Okay. Uh, so we, we believe that we'll have the, all the capital that we need to operate in short order. We're already operating, obviously, but as, right. the, as the orders pile in, we, we need more capital. Sure. And we're getting commitments for that. And, uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's a first year, so to speak, for us. Um, but it's in we're off to a start. We're moving ahead. Can you expound a little bit on the client base that Challenger has already? Yeah, um, it's really based on uh, defense, mm -hmm. uh, U.S. government at the federal level. We've we had sales at the county and local level. Uh, Challenger has been around since 2009. Yeah. So so their history, their clientele, which we've retained a lot of it, maybe not all of it, but a lot of it uh, is involved with law enforcement uh, at the uh, not only the federal level, but at the local and county level. Sheriff's departments have made inquiries. Um, they have sold to, to militaries overseas. Um, yeah. Don't want to get into too much detail uh, with that, but you know the field we're in, and it, the surveillance and reconnaissance technologies involved with force protection, obviously detecting threats, things like that, and and some of the drones have other payload capabilities, um, which uh, don't want to get into, but <laughs> but mostly all the top secret stuff, doggone it. <laughs> but, but you know, but most of what we do, to be perfectly frank, is surveillance and reconnaissance. Sure. That, you know, which also has great applications for agriculture, uh, inspecting oil fields, for example, uh, and doing what Amazon does, you know, delivering product. You know, it's uh, it's the future. Absolutely. As I said, we're just scratching the surface. We're, it's exciting. We're I, I tell you, I'm having a lot of fun. It's very exciting. We may find uh, drones are delivering mail someday. You know, you don't even need a postman. It's going to get that that easy that everything that people are doing that takes travel to go from one point to another, whether it be land, sea, or air, or even underwater, we're going to be using drones. And yeah. the people that are in these businesses, now there's a lot of companies working with drones, but most of them are working primarily with aerial drones, which has a lot of potential. But there's a lot more we can there's do on the ground, on the water, especially when it comes to security especially you know it's not just the air we got to concern ourselves with so i think you've got a company here that's a step ahead of most of our drone companies because you're covering all the different types of drones that we're going to be needing and again we could think tank all the different possibilities that these drones could be used for and no matter how many of us there are we're not going to cover even a portion of what we're going to be using drones for i think it's going to be probably overwhelming where we start seeing drones everywhere. But oh, I think your company's in the right place with the right products, a slew of them. A, a lot of people have concerns about the, the workplace. Uh, that Will they take the place of people? Uh, I don't think so. I think they're gonna complement uh, people's jobs in, in many ways. Um, we've had, uh, every time there's been new waves in technology, you've had disruptions in the workforce, but but really not eliminating the workforce. You realign where your uh, labor goes to. True. So, new jobs are created. New jobs are created. We're all in the same way, and it's, and it's just progress. So I, I don't think in the macro sense the, the people are going to lose that many jobs because of uh, drones, for example, and AI. But people will be displaced in some ways as the economy changes, which happens before. You know, that happens with all technology changes. True so, enough. Yeah. True enough. And we we go with it. I mean, it, nothing has ever detrimented the human race when it comes to technology. You, some jobs are taken away and new jobs are created. And we just keep 
elevating ourselves with the technology. We're moving along with it. Now, maybe someday we'll strictly be consumers. They'll be paying us to just consume because AI will be taking care of all the manufacturing, production, distribution, and it'll be our job to consume. Can you imagine that? I don't think yeah. that's- well, well, people are always gonna be in charge. And I think that putting on my education hat again, it's very important that the people out there designing our curriculums, and I'm a strong believer in the liberal arts, but preparing our next generations for the changes in technology. You know, yes. um, you don't want to, part of the problem is a lot of people are taking jobs or, or, or studying subjects that you know, those jobs are getting eliminated. So then they blame the education system when they should have been studying something else possibly. Yeah, I said that to my wife when I had my last child. I was just about 50 years old. Well, we are in a new era when I had my first child back in the 80s. Right. Now we're a gadget society. And it's like nobody's taught parents how to raise kids in a gadget society. You're losing control here. How do we deal with this? Right. So there is a constant education that has to come with our new technology, how we move with it, how we keep up with it so that we can be content and happy. Well, one of the things we did when we built that school is, you know, we looked at the future and said, every kid's got to be computer literate, have a computer. We mm -hmm. brought in computer aided design tools. Uh, so when these kids graduate and they want to go into architecture, for example, they already had the skills needed. Yes. So, you know, you had to really push ahead with this. And the kids going through school today need that kind of technology uh, background, that kind of education. Uh, so, they are valuable to the workplace, valuable to companies like mine. Absolutely. Uh, reading, well, writing, arithmetic, we're always going to learn. But if you're not learning what we're living with, right, you're right. going to fall behind. You know, yes, if people sir. aren't taught about computers, smartphones. This is what the world is using for communication and business. You're going to be out of society if you don't know how to use the technology that is coming out. That has always happened. A lot of the older generation like me fell behind when computers came out and they're forced forced to have to get involved if they want to live the way society lives. Look, I when I was in school, I had to do a, a computer project with uh, punch cards. Remember those? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever used one since? You know, you can't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Dot matrix printers with all the dots on the side used to print out 12 foot long pieces of paper. That's no. all in history. By today's standards, it's awful, you know, so yeah. you, you need to move ahead. But to get back to my point, you know, those of us that are resilient and challenger aerospace and defense, uh, we want to stay ahead of the game. And we are fully cognizant of the fact that we need the best technical people to move this company forward, keep us on the cutting edge. Now, we were just looking at your website. You've just updated your website, still working on it, but boy, does that look good. Lots of information at a glance. and You don't have to do anything but watch. But there was a lot of information in there beyond Challenger, a lot of other things that you were talking about. Can you explain some of that to us, what you're involved in or what you're going to be involved in? Well, you know, we, we are looking at all possibilities in terms of bringing revenue to the company. Uh, that fits in with our overall mission of uh, energy, technology, and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, right now, to be honest with you, we are fully engaged in making this first acquisition work. We are, sure. we are so so most of our efforts are behind Challenger Aerospace and Defense. Understood. Uh, a lot of work there. Uh, at the same time. We've been in conversations with other companies in this field. Mm -hmm. um, too early to announce anything, uh, but those discussions are ongoing. So basically we see the future of uh, resilient energy leaning towards drones and technology and AI and that sort of thing. Absolutely. And you know, we, we, if you talked to us six months ago, we probably wouldn't tell you that. Uh, wow. But we have to be uh, nimble in this environment. We have to be flexible. We can't shut ourselves off to new ideas. And are you that. going to retain your oil energy or are you considering maybe letting that go in the future? No, we actually, we're looking at some very nice properties that are also good opportunities mm -hmm. um, that are within the model we set out originally. Um, basically traditional plays, 
uh, low cost operations, low cost development operations, nothing fancy or, you know, deep shale or hydraulic right. tracking, none of that. Um, but uh, a, it's a good model for generating cash. Uh, we are concerned about the multiples that some of the energy companies are getting. We don't know if that's the, in the best interest of our shareholders, but we are looking at um, we're, we're looking at the numbers on a couple of very attractive properties. So. Are these U.S. properties? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. All those would be onshore properties. Anything else in the workings in the background? You can. I think we have enough on our plate right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? Right. Right. And and I like the fact that you are concentrating and focusing on the one big deal. Let's take care of that block. Let's get that in place and build around it. And then you're going to have yourself a solid structure. And I think we, we I want, own yeah. where we need to be. Look, we want to do things right. It has nothing to do with doing things fast necessarily or doing everything that crosses my desk. Okay. We, we're working on something that's extremely profitable, extremely um, timely. And for the time being, our energy and our resources are going to go to maximize those efforts mm -hmm. as we then try to expand out a bit. Uh, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but we don't want to get behind. You, you want to stay, as they say, on the curve. And you don't right. want to get ahead of the curve or behind the curve. So we're, we're staying on the curve. Now, I was reading that you are just about ready to start pulling in some revenues off of this Challenger deal and get revenues on the books for yourself. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, they, at the rate we're, we've, where our production is right now, we're probably going to start showing numbers in third quarter. Great. Uh, our, That's our, great because we got nothing here. We got a bunch of zeros. So we're a lot of zeros. Like I said, it's a, it's a restart. Uh, right. But we have a lot of things in production now, and those numbers will change dramatically in third quarter. Great to hear. Period. Yeah. So it's, you know, and it was about uh, half a million the first deal we got looking at. Uh, maybe a bit, a bit more than that. Yeah. I thought it was like 500. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, we're, we're, we're counting it all, but you're right there on the cusp of bringing in revenues and getting this machine rolling. Our, our pipeline of activity is exceeding, is in the low seven figures. Let's put it that way. Excellent. Now let's talk about your share structure. You've got a really good share structure with your company. It's the best. <laughs> you know, we have, about, we have about 4 million shares in the float, and 24 million shares outstanding. Um, that's good. You yeah, know. there you go. So you said you got about 4 million in the float? Currently, yes. Yeah, yeah, about. Okay, so we got to get our numbers updated here. I always tell people, if these numbers are correct, if things can change so quickly and it takes time to update everything. Yeah. But it does really look good. 4 million float. Oh my God, we've got ourselves a super duper low float. You sell 10 million shares in one day, every share had to sell two and a half times in one day. Yeah. And of course, not everybody's going to sell. Some are going to hold. So now you got supply and demand issues. <laughs> this can really push a stock to some strong runs when you've got a low float and hot news. And I think your company is right there on the cusp. You're, you're in a sector that is growing very fast right now. We have no idea how big this sector is going to get. Honestly, don't. And you're not just dealing with aerial, you're dealing with stuff on the water, stuff on the land. This is just opening up every door out there. And I'm excited to see where this is going to go. The oil, I've never been one much for oil. As you said, it's been around forever and it's pretty much the same business over and over again. And there's a lot of competition out there when it comes to oil. That market's changing dramatically as well. I, I think oil and gas will be around for a long time, but it's going to have to share the playing field with some of the yeah. other energies. Yeah. Um, uh, the reality is, though, as an investment opportunity, it's for now, it looks very good uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, I think a lot of the companies took a lot of money out of development uh, because they thought we'd be much further ahead on the renewable energy side. Mm -hmm. And that's not coming to pass. So you're going to have, I think you're going to have some supply issues, not to mention the fact that we have some conflicts around the world that are uh, affecting supply chains in, in terms of energy. Um, but I think for the time being, the, the, the prices will be attractive there and the oil and gas will be around for a long time.
Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, it doesn't matter if we go to hydrogen or if we go to electric cars, we're always going to need oil for lubrication. It doesn't have to be burned in an engine. All of our moving parts need oil. I'm sure gas is going to be needed somewhere. You know, we're not going to get rid of this stuff 100%. We're you, have to, you have to remember something also. The, the, um, not only vehicles, but anybody who uses natural gas or oil, they're becoming more efficient. So, you know, the car that used to burn, you know, gas at six miles to the gallon 30 years ago, the equivalent car today is doing 26 miles to the gallon. True. That saves a lot of oil and gases as well. So, you know, what we're using today, if we were to use half as much, let's say 20 years from now, that half as much might be running the same amount of equipment because everything's getting more efficient, more clean. Right. So, yeah, cleaner is the big deal here because that's the only reason we're looking away. It's not because of the finite resource. We haven't run into not getting enough. It's yeah. just polluting the earth. So we're trying to find cleaner ways. And if they can clean up the way our oils and gases burn, yeah. they're not going to disappear if we can make them righteous. You know, right. we, we always yeah, right. have a use for them. And the, and the technology is improving there, too. Everybody that uses fossil fuels are, are burning them cleaner now, too. We That's have a ways to go. It's going to share uh, space with renewable energies, which are fine. Those are actually job creators, too. Those are new technologies in many respects. Uh, but oil and gas is going to be around. The prices are very attractive. We're looking at all possibilities. Now, I was looking at your disclosures. Right now, your company states that you are pink limited. And I'm going to presume that is solely because you didn't have your attorney letter in at the time. That was actually a mistake. I believe FINRA misfiled it. And we've since fixed that. I don't know when the last time. It shouldn't be that way. Uh, we have to talk. To <laughs> well, I do see your attorney letter is in. It came in just it did like come in. days so, ago. Yeah, those have to be updated. We had the attorney letter in. And yeah, I think you had it in a couple times, time. actually. A couple times. Yeah. Was, they didn't They didn't file correctly, I believe. So, so your pink limited should be falling off. As you said, it's inaccurate. So we should be pink limited fairly soon here because you deserve to be pink limit or pink. Yeah. 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 We'll, we'll right. have that back soon. That's a mistake. <laughs> you heard it, folks. It's it, a it mistake. Happens. We're, it we're happens. going to pink. But I did see all the filings were there. There was nothing missing. I went through every single one. Notice the attorney letter just came out on the 23rd. And FEMA does take a while to update their records. It's so there. I think everything's, everything was okay now. Yeah, everything's there. It's Yeah. All right. Let's see here. Um, I had a couple questions from um, our viewers. We've already asked one there. Uh, let's see here. Bump, ba -da -dum, bump. Expanding portfolio, acquire other business in the manufacturing. Yeah, we've talked about that. Okay. Is there anything that I haven't brought up? I, I've tried to cover what's on the OTC, but there's always more information in the background that hasn't come out. Maybe you can share something with us that isn't top secret. <laughs> um, I wasn't ready for that question. <laughs> <laughs> Good, I caught you off guard. You see that, folks? Finally, I caught somebody off guard. Yeah. I never get anybody off guard. You caught me off guard. Um, I can't enlighten you on new developments just yet, but I'll be prepared the next time we talk. <laughs> well, I like that. You know, it's a lot like Christmas. I can't tell you what's in the package, but I can show you the package. It's under the tree. So that's good. We know well, more is coming. What I can tell you is some of the discussions – uh, that we're having with other companies involved uh, um, modernizing certain propulsion systems, for example, uh, for the drone technology, certain uh, updated software packages uh, to uh, enhancements, things like that. Um, that's what we're looking at right now. So. And these are other companies that will add technology to your already either either potential acquisitions or or potential licensing arrangements. Right. So. Now, I'm presuming we haven't asked this question, and I didn't actually recall reading it anywhere. I've got to presume there's a lot of IP involved with this Challenger company. Yes. Yeah, I got it because, you know, normally they brag about how many patents they have. I couldn't find that information anywhere. Do you happen to know offhand? 
Uh, not specifically offhand, but I know we have patents on um, much of our technology. And obviously, Challenger does too. Obviously, yes. you got to protect their their goods. Yes. So I think we've covered virtually everything. I'm sure someone will say, why didn't you ask this? Well, you should have told me to ask. <laughs> I can only remember what I need to know. Well, we appreciate you coming back. We are watching this company. I like your Challenger acquisition simply because it is more than most of the drone companies we've been looking at. Most drone companies have one type of drone. They don't have multiple types of drones. You're working with government contracts. You have a management from Challenger, which has top secret clearance, which you said is necessary when you're working with the military with these sort of products. So we're in there. We're in there with top products, top management, and we're in the right place at the right time. One of the things that we should point out in terms of the, this particular marketplace is the value proposition we give our clients um, in that some of the things that we do are being done by the big players, but their products are in the millions of dollars often or hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right. And ours are much more cost effective. So for certain uh, organizations, um, certain countries that uh, are allied with us who uh, need this type of technology but don't have our budget, uh, some of these products are much more attractive than some of the big players that do a lot of the same things. So Absolutely. Right. So you're competitive. You not only have a lot to offer, but you offer it at a cheaper price, which really is going to be the bottom line. Because when you buy drones, you don't buy one at a time. You normally buy a fleet of drones. And you're yeah. not going to be wanting to spend millions of dollars if you can get away with it for hundreds of thousands. Absolutely. And, and, yeah, and, some, and some of the technology that we do have um, is uh, applicable to helicopters and fixed wings. So it's, you know, and you put something in a drone, you can take out some of it, I guess, or reconfigure it and put it into traditional air types of aircraft to use. So we, our market is very broad. Not everything we do is drones. Yeah, that, that was, you have lots of news here just recently. Folks, if you want to read it, just go to their most recent news presses. There's like two or three of them talking about the MM8000 or the MMS8000. MMS8000. Right. And you Which can find a computer, right? It's, it's a it's small a computer. computer. If you go to the Challenger um, Aerospace and Defense.com website, it's Challenger Aerospace and Defense. Um, there you go, folks. Throw a picture up on top of me. There for That's what it looks like. <laughs> right. You can go to the, uh, there's a few divisions under Challenger, it's under Aero Computers. Yeah, I just uh, threw up a picture for them. I know you can't see it, but it's there for I can't them. See it, yeah, <laughs> and you can take a look, and uh, there's a description of the MNS8000 uh, that we're selling a lot of right now. And that's great. You know, as you said, you're expanding not outside of the aerial sector. I mean, you're still in airplanes, but you're not in drones. And we have lots and lots and lots of planes that could use this technology without having to convert to new technology. Just Add this on to what you're already doing, and you can do a lot more applications with security and safety. So yeah. I think you've got a hot product there. I mean, I looked at it, and I kept seeing rotary blades. It's like, this has nothing to do with drones. This has nothing to do with drones. But it is a huge market that already exists that you're just tapping into. You don't have to create this market. Just catch right. on it. The important thing to realize, and just the last point to make, is the drone market is becoming highly commoditized. Um, like anything else, the, the drones are starting to look like one another. There's, they come in several categories and mm -hmm. a lot of people are making them, mm -hmm. What differentiates one company from another in the end will be the technology and the software. Right. Uh, right. The, the platforms are being somewhat commoditized, but, but the software, the software and the technology is where the, the value comes in and where you can differentiate yourself. Absolutely. It's like buying a kit car that looks like a Lamborghini. But that exactly. ain't a Lamborghini. It just looks like a Lamborghini. The equipment inside is not the same. Yeah, it's so, got yeah. a Ford Focus engine in there, you know. So <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. You get what you pay for. Yeah. It may look like what you think it is, but it isn't. And that's what's really great about your company. I did see a lot of the di different drones. They look different. I've been to other companies where they've got six different drones, and 
they really all look alike. I'm having a hard time telling the difference. We have a, a big product hard. offering. Uh, some of our stuff is unique, but you know, it's uh, they're all some variation of one or the other. They, you have the rotary ones. You have the the fixed wing drones. They they they're designed to do different things. I have on the television all the time different companies being you know advertising their products, and there's similarities there uh, between a lot of the the equipment. Sure. But the difference is the software and the and the application of the technologies, and that's where companies separate themselves from others. And you feel you're definitely better than yes. your competitors. Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't think so. What a dumb question. Yeah. What were you going to say there? No, not really. <laughs> we're good. We're good. Check us out. If you need a drone, check us out. Yeah. Every family needs a drone to walk the dog. Right. <laughs> Hey, it's coming. You know it's coming. It's coming, yeah. Thank you for being with us today. I appreciate you sharing all the updates. You're going to have more and more of them, so I hope you'll come back again. It's always well, a pleasure talking to you, Jen. It's a pleasure talking to you. And folks, just because we're telling you what's going on, that doesn't excuse you from doing your own due diligence. Absolutely. Get in there. Read those filings. Read those press releases. Go to the websites. Check them out. You need to sell yourself. The information we give you is just to make you curious, get you excited, get you to do your own due diligence. Good advice. Yep. Thanks for being with us, folks. We will catch up with you again later. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. We'll see you again. Bye-bye.